Hi, pen friends, it's Christy, and I'm back today to share with you my currently inked for February. I definitely missed sharing with you in January. I have just or will be putting up my thoughts on the ink and pen pairings I did for January. One thing I learned in January, though, was that I like to have a pen assigned to each of my specialty planners or journals. I keep this and move this with my big A5 journal wherever I go, but for my tarot journal and my year five journal, my five-year journal, I discovered that there's less friction and it's easier for me to actually stay up to date on that. If I have pens dedicated to those journals. Now, if you haven't seen my currently inked in the past, I subscribe to the Sterling Ink sticker kit each month. And I've put a couple of the stickers from the kit in the corners here. So you can kind of see how my colors sort of coordinate and go along with each other. Not completely because of the different journals, but mostly. My experiment I set out to do in January has continued into February, so I'm still for the most part using my more knockabout pens. There are a couple exceptions here. I'm going to start off with the Jin Hao X159. It was recommended to me that I give this a try to see what I think about a number eight nib, and I have to say I love it. Jury's still out on the grip section, or at least the grip section with this weight of pen. It's a really lightweight pen, and we'll see. The ink I put in it is Rohr and Klingner Salax. That's an iron gall ink, hence putting it in a Jin Hao. I love that color blue, but for I think because of being afraid of the iron gall, I just haven't really used it. So the next pen I have listed here is one of my acquisitions from the Philly Pen Show, as is the ink. This was the Pen Show, one of the three models that Franklin Christoph had at the Philly Pen Show as an exclusive, although they did um, they did put up on their website any extras following the show. Uh, I'm guessing they're sold out by now, but I don't know. You could double check. This is the Model 2. I really wasn't like a fan of the pen shape so much, but man, it posts so nicely, and I'm not a huge poster, but, oh, it balances so well and was so comfortable that this was my choice. Amelia liked this one, too, so we actually have shared custody. So next month, I have to put her medium nib in it and <laughs> let her use it. I got the extra fine sig nib on here, which is kind of like a remind me a uh, stub I think but it's supposed to be again the different angles that you put it at the line variation shifts but Amelia got a, just a medium uh, black nib for when she uses it then for my green, I went back to my old standby, the Alt Gold Green from Roar and Klingner. I just love that ink so much. And this is my Navalar or Narwhal Classic Plus. And I had Kirk Spear fix the nib for me. The nib was giving me nothing but problems from day one. And... It was too broad for me, and it was dry, and it just, it was, it ended up, it was misaligned, too, when I got it. I was just not having a pleasant experience with this pen, but I had him grind it to an 
extra fine slash fine cursive smooth italic. And oh, I love it now. It is awesome. It's amazing how how much the nib influences the experience of the pen. I mean, I suppose I should be like, duh, Christy, it's the nib that controls the ink flow and all of that. But I don't know. I, I mean, the aesthetics are still important to me to, to a point, but if the nib performs really well, I am coming to realize I don't care too, too much about what it looks like. Then the next color that... I chose is the Birmingham Penco Chrysanthemum and I put it in this Pilot Kikuno that I got somewhere towards the end of the year. I actually got it with a medium nib because I'm trying to branch out guys. I'm wanting to get into slightly broader nibs because I just love that super smooth experience when the pen and ink just glide across the paper like butter. I'm hoping I can teach myself to write a little bigger if I force myself to use some more medium nibs. That's what I have going in the Kakuno. Then for my shimmer ink, for the accents, the moon phases, and all of that in my planner, I have my Jin Hao X. This is the 450, and it has the super broad Fude nib. Well, not super broad. It has a broader Fude nib than, than the Fudes that you get with the Jin Hao 82s. And I have a Diamine Ink Vent ink in there. You can just about guess if I have a shimmer in something that it's going to be an ink vent ink because they are almost the only shimmer inks I have. Uh, this is the Lavender Frost and I am loving it. I love that purpley gray color and the little bit of sheen to just like dress it up. It's just lovely. Then not fitting in so much with that color scheme is two Jin Hao 82s that I've dedicated to my tarot journal. And I am taking part in Don Michelle's Fellowship of the Weavers. And this is what the materials look like. I don't want to give her work away, but um, I wanted I wanted ink that kind of coordinated with this look that she has built for this experience. And this is actually kind of um combining role playing with tarot but still maintains like in-depth questions like it can still be as much self-development as as you want it to be um i'm gonna give it a few more months and see how it goes but i wanted inks that kind of coordinated with that so i think every month there'll be a brown and a green ink i don't know if I'll just stick with the these two all year. But in my coffee Jin Hao 82, it actually has my teal Fude nib section in there. And this is Distressed Leather from Birmingham Pen Company. It's a sample I have, so if I'm going to use this all year, then I'll need to get myself a bottle. But I did want a Fude for the tarot journal because if these are my only two pens I have with me on that journal I want to be able to make headlines and stuff. Brown has the Fude nib. Then for my green I actually decided to go with the Taranishi Gentle Green. That was Simone's favorite ink of 2023. It goes down very teal turquoise but it dries to kind of a grass green or an emerald green, sort of. Again, that's a sample, but I happen to have received two samples, one from Simone and one from Nikki. And 
I'm using it for my experiment, which I will share that with you guys when I'm done. I will share the results of it because I had two samples and one of them was, was an extra generous sample. I used that ink for the experiments, but I knew I had enough to go ahead and just ink up this pen. I suspect these these two colors will probably carry through at least. Well, they'll go back and do January because I fell behind. So they'll do January and February. We'll see when it comes time to ink in March, like how much ink I have left in these and if I'm getting tired of these shades or not. I should mention that this pen, my Franklin Kristoff, is going to going to be with my five-year planner. So I'm picking one ink per month for that planner. I know some people stick with one ink all year long. I don't think I can make that level of commitment. So <laughs> I'm, I'm switching up the color each month, but as the years go by, I will choose colors that, that kind of coordinate yet set off. Then if you happen to look closely, you'll see that I have a little note here that says 2.4 millimeter Pilot Parallel. And this I just got. It's a Pilot Parallel that I put the section. I just screwed the section off and put it on the body of the Pilot Spare Sign Pen which you can get from jet pens for like 16 or $17. And I put antique sepia in there to kind of coordinate with these, uh, this background um, texture in, in the stickers. And I'll use this for highlighting things. And as you can see, I can write with the edge of it to get, kind of fine. So if I want to make like a fine note, I'll do that. And then you may also notice that I did not pull out this pen, but I always have a gray inked up and it has been in this clear Twisby Eco for a long, long time. And I just carry that through until it's empty or dried out. And I do that for side notes. Like I note Amelia's schedule so that I'm aware of like when she's going to be gone and when she's going to be home and stuff like that. But I don't need it to jump off the page at me. So it looks a little more like just penciling something in, but it's not pencil. This is the uh, Kirisame Irishizuku that is in there. So that is my lineup for February. I look forward to coming back and sharing with you the pairings and how I rated them. I have the little lines here and I have a key. So I'm going to put the ink in the first box, the pen, and then the pair rating. I had to switch things up since I had more pens and inks this time. But I think this is going to work well because it's a base of four slash five if you count the parallel for my main journal and planner and then one pen for the five year and two pens for the tarot journal. Hopefully I will be sharing my tarot journal with you um, later in the month. I've like I said I fell behind on January so I've got stuff that I need to fill in there yet. I need to backfill on it but once I have that going or caught up and I have February going, I want to show it to you because I did some things that I think are kind of cool and I think you might enjoy if you are also into tarot and oracle. I'm not going to set myself a schedule. I don't need that pressure right now. I am just going to pop in when I feel like it and when I can get my computer to play with iMovie and my external hard drive. <laughs> and when that happens, I'll upload videos. So sorry for being inconsistent, but that's just where I am right now. And I tell my clients to meet themselves where they are. So that's what I'm doing. I'm meeting myself where I am and I'm posting when I feel like it and can.
do it without it creating stress and without it taking away the fun. So thank you so much for being here. I would love to hear what you're using for February. Also, do you get any monthly sticker kits and you coordinate your inks to go with them or do you end up hoarding your sticker kits? I made a deal with myself that as long as I use up the stickers that I can get the next month's kit. But if I start not using up the stickers, then I need to stop the subscription. So any that I have left over, I go and add in empty spaces on the planner. And then I also use to adorn um, just plain paper to be stationary for my pen pals. So that's what works for me. It keeps me from acquiring and hoarding stuff and uh, I hope my pen pals like it. Okay, this is the classic goodbye that my family has. I try to say goodbye a hundred different times. Does your family do that? I know my wife's family does too. So, I mean, at this time, <laughs> until I see you again, please be safe and be well. Aho. And so it is. Bye.